Okay, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for making it to this uh, last lecture in this PySynd video series. Uh, and today I'm just going to be talking about how to build complex or very tailored libraries uh, for whatever feature library you're trying to build for your system. Uh, so again, uh, this is this feature library in the Cindy optimization problem, and it can have any linear or nonlinear function you want of the of the system variables, of the control inputs, of the spatio-temporal variables. So these this can, in general, contain many, many different functions, and this can go combinatorically large if you just choose anything. Uh, so we want to show how you can sort of tailor these things and uh, and really have some uh, advanced functionality in PySynde to, to do this. So the first two things I'm going to show is just how you can concatenate two libraries. So just take the columns of one library, the columns of another, and just make one big library containing the columns of both. And then I'm going to show you how to tensor two libraries together, uh, where you take the columns of one library, columns of the second library, and then take all combinations of the columns and put all of those combinations into one big overarching library. Uh, so, so we're going to start out with just an identity library and a Fourier library. So identity library just means if you put in uh, XYZ, the library will be XYZ. Uh, the Fourier library takes sines and cosines of XYZ. Okay, so pretty simple uh, libraries here. And now uh, we can uh, concatenate them with a simple, so we've, we've written classes that actually allow you to just simply add them together. So you literally can just uh, write, write this and um, do I have anything else I want to do? Okay, I guess we'll fit it on um, on the Lorenz data and just uh, show that it creates the terms you would expect. So uh, feature names are the uh, XYZ feature names we've been using. And um, feature library is the one we just defined. We do model.fit xtrain t equals dt and uh, model dot get feature names. Actually, I, I realize uh, we do need to um, redefine the uh, Lorenz data because the last thing I ran was the enzyme model. So let me just rerun that. Sorry for the code explosion here, but if I just rerun this, Lorenz data is nice and loaded. And we can go back to building our library. So let's see if that worked. OK, right. So um, so we, we built this concatenation of the identity li library and the Fourier library. So we got the identity xyz. And then we got sine and cosine of xyz. And so our, um, our candidate library was both of those combined. Uh, now we're going to repeat the exact same thing but we're going to use this tensor library. And uh, instead of using a plus, we just uh, change this to a, uh, a times. So it's just going to multiply all the combinations. And uh, we do the exact same thing. Although I guess uh, I should call this like tensor lib or something. And we're going to look at the feature names again. So uh, now we get the x times sine x, x times cosine x, and then all the different combinations you can form between x, y, z, the identity library, and sine, cosine of x, y, z, the Fourier library. So it tensored all the possible terms together and gave you a library. So that's really useful. Um, and then uh, the last thing I wanted to show is this really general, uh, what we're calling a generalized library. And this creates the most general and flexible possible library you could possibly want. Uh, so it, it not only can combine and tensor as many libraries as you want, you can even specify which input variables uh, and even which control input variables you want for each library. Um, <coughs> so let me, let me just demonstrate this uh, on a pretty, pretty advanced uh, uh, scenario. So uh, we're going to define polynomial library. Just have to bear with me here. So we're going to use the, reuse the Fourier library from before, so I'm not going to redefine that. And then we're going to use a, um, a complicated um, uh, custom library 
built from these lambda functions that I've been showing. So let's do something weird like uh, 1 over x plus 100 and um, let's say an exponential of minus x. Okay, And um, once again, so that we can understand the output, let's define the uh, function names. So this will be 1.0 plus x. We have to do some string shenanigans here. Okay, so remember these are just the names of uh, the functions. So I'm just trying to format this nicely so that uh, we can understand the, uh, the output at the end here. Okay, um, but I think that's roughly right. Um, so we, we have a polynomial library with a Fourier library from before and a custom library. So we have three uh, different libraries. Um, we're now going to uh, make something kind of weird looking. Uh, too much. I'll explain this in a second. Okay. Um, so this inputs per library is telling the library which of the inputs x, y, z, and actually we're going to use this on a more complicated uh, Lorenz system. So actually, let's erase this. To really demonstrate the power of this method, uh, we're going to use slightly more complicated Lorenz system where we have some control input, plus u0 and uh, plus u1, I think. Sorry, this is minus u1. Ah. Okay, so we added some control inputs. And so actually, we now technically have five input variables. We have x, y, z, u0, u1. Um, and so I'm going to specify which of those five input variables I want for each uh, of the library generations I'm going to make. Uh, so I'll, I'll show that in a second. Uh, now I need to, so right now it's, it's defined such that all the library use, use all the inputs, and now I'm going to change that behavior. So this is going to seem a little voodoo, uh, and then I will... Uh, show you what it generates and it'll make uh, a lot more sense, I hope. So that's good. Two, two, oh. Okay. Let's print out what I just did there. Uh, then we're going to define what's called a tensor array. And this just uh, tells the library uh, which of the three libraries I've defined to tensor together to make uh, even more libraries. Um, so uh, what, am I, what am I telling it here? Uh, so I have the polynomial library, the Fourier library, and the custom library. And so the first... Uh, three-dimensional array here is saying I want the opt I want the uh, I want to tensor together the polynomial library and the Fourier library uh, into one overall tensor library and then the second array is saying I want you to do the same thing but with the Fourier library and the custom library so we're taking <laughs> sort of uh, two pairwise tensors uh, for each of those um, uh, uh, of those three libraries. Uh, so that's, that's what TensorArray is doing. Now we can actually uh, uh, generate this generalized library. So uh, let's write that down. So uh, we have polylib, uh, Fourier lib, and um, I guess I never uh, called 
the custom lib. So let's uh, do that. So library functions equals lib library functions and function names equals library function names. Okay, so we have our custom lib now. So uh, we're passing the three libraries to the generalized library. Uh, then we are uh, passing this tensor array that I mentioned. And then we are passing this uh, inputs per library equals inputs per library. Okay, good. And now we can do model equals pf dot cindy with this feature library. Good. Um, and the optimizer, uh, I guess we will use the uh, default here. So, okay. Uh, so let's print the model and uh, print the model feature names that we generated uh, from this uh, crazy library I'm, uh, I'm uh, building here. Oh, and uh, probably misspelled something. Uh, no, I forgot to fit it. Okay, fair enough. Um, uh, Uh, okay, I, let's see, did I uh, mistype something here? Three, five, okay. <sighs> let's see. Ah, uh, okay, um, right. So I uh, cheated a little bit. So remember, I'm not doing the Lorenz system, I'm doing this controlled Lorenz system. So actually, I, I passed the wrong fitting data to it, not X-Train, I want the X-Train control from this five-dimensional system. Uh, so I, I need to pass that, and I also need to pass the associated um, uh, control inputs with that training data. So I think the model.fit should look like this. Uh, add this in case it's uh, complaining. I think that should work now. Okay, right, so uh, first thing to notice, uh, gives us the correct model for x dot y dot z dot. It gives a plus u zero term and it gives a minus u one term, okay? So it, it gives us the right model despite this crazy library. Um, and now I wanna show you what it generated. Uh, so uh, first of all, Let's look at the first terms through, uh, through about here. So this is the polynomial library generated from all five variables. So it's using uh, x, y, z, and uh, u, u0 and u1 in order to generate this big old uh, polynomial library. Uh, so Actually, this will be a little clearer if I pass the feature names. So let's do that. Otherwise, it's a little hard to read here. So X, Y, Z, U0, U1. Okay, that's much better. Right, so the polynomial term uses all the input variables. And then what you see is the Fourier library actually only uses x and y, and not z, u0, or u1. So you can actually specify a subset of the input variables for each of the libraries. And then, um, oops, I, <laughs> that looks bad. Let me uh, fix this. So this would be x plus 100, make it look a little better. So, uh, and then I did the same thing for that custom library, I said, uh, instead of the five input variables, just use x and u1 for the custom library, uh, and indeed it does. So it only gives us uh, x and u1 terms for those uh, custom functions that I defined. Um, and now, uh, so it takes those three separate libraries, and now it takes the um, tensor product of the polynomial library with that Fourier library. 
So you get all these terms. And again, you only get cosine of x, sine of x, cosine x, sine of y, cosine of y. So still using that subset of the input variables. So we get all those mixed terms. And then the last thing you get are these, uh, this second tensor library where we've taken the tensor product of the Fourier library with the uh, custom library. So you get these sines and cosines times these uh, uh, stranger custom functions. And uh, so we've, we've built this huge uh, generalized library that uh, consists of three independent libraries that we can define through PySynde, uh, plus two tensor libraries that we formed by uh, sort of taking combinations of those and put all five into this big library. Uh, and importantly, we can specify which input variables we want to put into each library. And this really allows us to tailor our candidate library very powerfully. Uh, so this is the functionality I wanted to show for folks who are using this sort of advanced um, usage in PySynde. Uh, and thank you very much for sticking out for these lectures and uh, your interest. And please, if you have any more issues, uh, please post them on the issues page at the uh, GitHub repository for PySynde. Uh, which was uh, posted on uh, previous videos. Uh, so thanks again.